Fort Indian Town Gap has been home to the Pennsylvania National Guard since the 1940s. The base, located in rural South Central Pennsylvania, is about 17,000 acres in size, with the vast majority being a wilderness made up of different habitat types. The installation actively trains year-round, catering to all branches of the U.S. Armed Forces. Training activities are diverse, ranging from simple tasks such as orienteering and driver training to more elaborate live fire events. To assist with managing the natural resources on post, FIG employs a conservation section made up of foresters and wildlife biologists who are tasked with land management work such as prescribed fire and land clearing, as well as conducting surveys of plants and wildlife. Military lands are often ecological hotspots due to the lack of modern development. As one of the busiest National Guard training centers, Fort Indiantown Gap's lands have avoided the influence of agricultural and urban development. Trainers on the installation require real-world conditions that allow soldiers to train as they would fight. This means the military relies on FIG's wild environment to do its job. Protection from urban sprawl, in combination with varied amounts of disturbance through military training and land management, have contributed to a complex of grassland, scrubland, wetland, and forested habitats that vary in successional age, making FIG as ecologically important as it is for our military. As a mosaic of habitats, military lands often harbor more endangered species than any other type of public land because they can host a diverse and unique ecological community. FIG currently hosts more than 60 threatened and endangered species on either the state or federal level, as well as numerous species of special concern. Some of these species are birds, reptiles, and mammals, but many are insects, more specifically Lepidoptera, butterflies, and moths. These taxa are often supported by early successional habitats, such as grasslands and wildflower meadows. One of the most important rare species of butterfly at FIG is the Eastern Regal Fritillary Butterfly, which exists only at FIG and draws interest from many different groups such as conservation organizations, regulators, the media, and the public. The Regal Fritillary is a large showy butterfly with orange forewings with black borders and iridescent black or olive hind wings. Females of the species are larger than males, with thicker black wing margins and black patches with white dots on the tips of their dorsal forewings. The two sexes can also be distinguished by the rows of spots on their dorsal hindwings. Females will have a double row of cream white colored spots, while males will have one row of white spots above a row of orange spots. Grassland ecosystems have been on decline since the early 1900s, and this decline has only been magnified in the past four decades. The regal fritillary is a grassland endemic species, so while surrounding populations disappeared along with warm season grasslands, the population at FIG, home to the largest and highest quality areas of native warm season grasslands in the region, has persevered. So what do regals and training soldiers have in common? They both need ranges. The butterfly relies on an early successional habitat, which is young, dynamic, productive, and begins forming only after a disturbance to the land. Historically, disturbances to habitat came in the form of fire, wind, flooding, and ungulates grazing the land. Other disturbances were more purposeful. Native Americans burned and cleared land for agriculture. Today, the effects of these disturbance events are mirrored in the form of military activity regime and calculated land management carried out by conservation staff at Fort Indian Town Gap that is intended to support both military training and maintain habitat for wildlife. Acting as a modern-day surrogate for grazing ungulates, training carried out with track vehicles has proven beneficial for densities of larval host plants. A key player in shaping habitat at FIG, fire is no stranger to the base. Wildfires occur as a result of the realistic live fire training conducted by units. Conservation staff at FIG implement prescribed fire to reduce wildfire hazard via fuel management on live fire ranges and training areas as well as to manage the habitat of many species of wildlife, including the regal fritillary. Wildfire and prescribed burning at FIG have created a unique fire regime on the base, a disturbance that is invaluable in developing and maintaining high quality early successional habitat for the regal. Biologists also work to maintain quality grassland habitats via mechanical and chemical strategies, such as mowing, selective herbicide application, and the manual removal of woody invasive species. In order to employ effective management strategies for the regal fritillary, 
Biologists at FIG devote a great deal of time to monitoring habitat as well as the well-being of the population on the base. For over 20 years, surveys of population density have been carried out in multiple research areas on a weekly basis in order to gather information about how the population is thriving. Conservation staff also conducts assessments of habitat quality by gathering data about the quantities of various vegetation that is required by the butterfly. At FIG, early successional habitat that supports the regal fritillary comes in the form of native grasslands consisting of approximately 30% warm season bunch grasses, primarily broom sedge and little blue stem. In addition to these grasses, which the butterfly will utilize for protection throughout all of its life stages, this early successional habitat supports the larval host plants upon which the caterpillars feed, as well as the flowering nectar plants that are essential as an adult food source. As caterpillars, regals feed on the leaves of various species of violets. They are common in areas of open vegetation because of the lack of competition from other plants. The disturbed nature of regal habitat at fig encourages the growth of the primary larval host plant, the arrow-leaved violet. As adults, Butterflies feed on nectar from grassland forbs, including common milkweed, butterfly milkweed, swamp milkweed, bee balm, pasture thistle, and field thistle. Butterflies obtain this sugary fluid from flowers using their proboscis, a straw-like mouthpart that unfurls when feeding. Access to a diversity of nectar species is crucial to the success of the regal fritillary. Because some plants bloom earlier than others, access to multiple nectar sources guarantees a food source for butterflies throughout their entire flight period. When males aren't feeding on nectar or taking a moment to rest, they can be seen patrolling for females with a consistently brisk pace. Females can often be observed in the field feeding calmly on nectar or resting. They are known to nestle themselves into vegetation, so males will stay low to the ground while in flight. After they spot a potential mate, Males will quickly flutter close by, bumping the females repeatedly. If the female butterfly has not been previously mated and the male's efforts to win her affection are successful, the two will link up and take a short flight to find a perch to mate upon. After mating, females remain relatively inactive until they begin ovipositing, or laying eggs, a process that begins in late summer and continues into the early fall. During this time, females can be observed searching for suitable oviposition sites and can be seen dipping in and out of vegetation. The number of eggs laid by a female can vary greatly, but averages around 2,000 in a laying period. After roughly a month, caterpillars begin to hatch and consume the outer shell of their egg before they seek refuge in leaf litter to overwinter as first instar caterpillars. Adverse winter conditions cause the caterpillars to enter a state of dormancy, or diapause. They become inactive and development is halted. When temperatures rise in early spring, larvae wake from this diapause and begin consuming violet leaves, which are the sole food source for the caterpillars as they grow, molt, and shed their skin and progress through six developmental stages called instars. Once they reach the sixth and final instar, larvae molt in a manner that results in pupation, becoming pupa or chrysalises. Two to three weeks after pupation, adult regals emerge from their chrysalises as butterflies. Males kick off the emergence of this single brooded species around the middle of June, feeding on nectar plants and patrolling for mates. One to two weeks later, females begin to emerge and mate with males, restarting the cycle. In recent years, there has been an increased awareness in the importance of biodiversity, pollinators, and grassland conservation. While the eastern regal fritillary butterfly persists at fig, it is concerning that this is the only remaining population. Biologists, with the support of numerous partners, are attempting to increase the outlook of this species through a reintroduction project. The ultimate hope is to create viable, self-sustaining populations at other locations throughout Pennsylvania and beyond. One of the first steps to reintroduction is selecting a site and managing the habitat. Because regals have very specific needs, sites should be hundreds to thousands of acres in size, have all host plants present, and have partners committed to the goal of long-term native warm season grassland conservation. While the primary focus is the regal, the work is ecosystem-based and will benefit a variety of grassland species, such as pollinators, birds, and small game. Since 2011, the FIG Conservation Section has fostered a partnership with Zoo America North American Wildlife Park 
to captive rear the eastern regal fritillary butterfly. The goal of this project is to produce quantities of individuals that can be used to establish self-sustaining populations within Pennsylvania. Captive rearing is a conservation strategy used to promote the recovery of the species and to increase the population outside of FIG. Biologists and zoo staff have drawn upon other captive rearing projects and devoted years of research to develop a protocol that caters to the unique biology of the regal. The annual process starts in late summer when egg-bearing female regals are collected from FIG and taken to Zoo America. For the next several months, biologists and zoo staff work together to raise thousands of eggs laid by these females, which will hatch into caterpillars. These fresh first instar hatchlings are half the size of a grain of rice and will only consume their eggshell before entering winter hibernation. Once egg consumption is complete, they are placed into environmental chambers to carry out the overwintering process. While most butterfly rearing programs deal with butterflies that lay only a couple hundred eggs, the regal is unique due to how productive females are. On average, a single female can lay over 2,000 eggs. In our own experience at Zoo America, we have documented a single female laying an impressive 3,737 eggs. Come early April, caterpillars are woken up and released either at FIG to supplement the active population or to reintroduction sites. A small number of individuals are kept in the lab to be reared to adulthood for research purposes. Reared adults are marked with a unique ID code and measured before they are released into the field. This ID allows biologists to distinguish reared individuals. Although fig grassland habitats provide a critical refuge for the regal fritillary population in the eastern United States, such a small, isolated, and greatly reduced population is vulnerable to sudden changes in climate and stochastic events such as disease and major storms. This is why a major focus of our activities is centered around monitoring the remaining population, and perhaps most spectacularly, reintroducing lab-reared populations back into natural areas. America has a rich heritage comprised of many different parts, all of which deserve to be supported and defended. One of the most valuable, but often overlooked, is our natural heritage. The wonders of our natural environment are not just captivating to the mind and spirit, but are part of a larger system of ecological links that keep our world running. At FIG, the Regal is just one piece of that extraordinary puzzle, as its existence is intimately linked to ecosystem health. The healthy spaces that support these butterflies also support soldiers, as they conduct real-world training events and serve to protect our country. Now more than ever, it is important that we work to conserve and understand our environment and natural resources, and in turn, maintain these ecological relationships that are vital to the well-being of so many species.